Hello everyone, let's start with our uh, webinar and uh, today's topic is uh, Windows Server and SQL Server Migration to Azure. My name is Dennis Tickerbam, Head of Partner Solutions and uh, today with me is Cloud Infrastructure Architect in Bremen, Sergei Sokolov. Hello. All right, let's get going. About uh, migration to Azure, uh, let's start with uh, triggers. Uh, what are those um, uh, triggers that's uh, driving the migrations? That one thing is uh, that your existing uh, data center uh, contract uh, is expiring, for example, and you will, mm, it's reasonable maybe to think about and, and calculate uh, how, how much it will cost and how, how good it will be in uh, Azure. Uh, the second thing is uh, merging and acquisition. Uh, you need quickly uh, to do some kind of uh, uh, merging and you need uh, capacity. Um, and then uh, yeah, the third one is uh, if you need some urgent capacity in your daily, I don't know, uh, production, you need to start using new services, uh, new, do some development, then there is uh, this uh, option to uh, get uh, urgent and a uh, lot of resource uh, what you need. Then the software or hardware is uh, expiring. Uh, your existing on-premises hardware is getting old. Uh, it's always uh, reasonable to uh, think about uh, how much um, it will cost or uh, how it will be in uh, cloud, in Azure, for example. Security is always a very important thing and I think uh, in Azure there is a lot of uh, features and, and uh, services and Microsoft and everyone putting effort to the cloud to secure uh, the, all the features put um, into the cloud that is not in the on-premises, you know, in the on-premises probably it's uh, hard to uh, get such a level of security. Uh, compliance also the same thing in on-premises maybe it's not so easy to apply those uh, requirements uh, if you are talking about uh, GDPR and so on mm, and I think the next one the application innovation is most important maybe if you want to uh, innovate or uh, start uh, using the new uh, applications services I think the uh, options there in Azure is uh, uh, much more like um, uh, possible than, than uh, on-premises. And of course software is uh, end of support. We are talking about that also in, uh, in a little bit uh, that if your existing uh, Microsoft software is getting old then how, what to do then. All right. And uh, why why we choose to migrate to Azure? One thing is uh, the cost always. This is most important for management level also. So it's um, in, uh, in Azure you pay uh, what you use. Uh, all the, you don't have to uh, buy like uh, virtual machines or like you do in on-premises, like you don't know how much it will, uh, you will be using of those resources. You will pay what you use, all the, I don't know, resources, services, and um, yeah, you will get, uh, uh, you can optimize it uh, like daily basis. And uh, of course, you will get uh, uh, all the features also. It's mm, more cheaper to get uh, high availability or disaster recovery sites and so on, so on. So uh, this is, uh, there is much, much more opportunity to optimize the cost. Uh, about the risk, uh, we talked about uh, security features, advanced threat protections uh, built in and so on. And then if you go into uh, to the platform services, you don't have to um, update and worry about uh, security patches. Uh, so this risk will be lower. And, uh, and of course, yeah, innovation of the features there uh, and services you can use for your uh, yeah, applications and developments. Mm. One thing is also uh, important that uh, uh, in Azure we can use it like in hybrid mode. Uh, if you're using already Windows servers or SQL or SharePoint or whatever, then it's, everything is uh, uh, possible to uh, migrate there, it will run there, but you can 
keep something on premises. You can use your Active Directory for uh, um, accesses and so on. So you don't have to go there fully like uh, in one day. You can slowly start using it in hybrid mode. And uh, about uh, cost effective uh, um, effectiveness, uh, yeah, you can uh, if you have like uh, old versions of uh, servers 2008 or SQLs. So you can if you will uh, host it in Azure, you will get you will get uh, uh, free security updates for them. And also you can use your existing um, licenses. It's a hybrid benefit there. Uh, we will talk about it uh, in next slide. And you can use, you can reserve your instances like uh, virtual machines and uh, get the better price. Yeah, and and again, security features there's also it's uh, hard, it's like cheaper to get all the necessary security features uh, uh, on top of the services there in cloud rather than in on premises. About the uh, um, cost savings, uh, about the hybrid benefits. If you have the licenses already bought uh, on premises and you have software assurance on top of the licenses, so you can use the same uh, licenses on Azure and you don't have to pay it uh, extra. So you will um, already save about uh, up to almost 50% of the price. And the next step is to uh, reserve the virtual machines there for a year or for three years. So you can uh, yeah, uh, save even more, uh, up to 80%. So if you think this true, calculate it a little bit. Maybe at the beginning you will um, use those virtual machines like uh, monthly based. All right, you will see in, uh, in two, three, four months that all right, this uh, type of virtual machine is uh, good enough. Then you will uh, reserve it for a year or for a free year and you will get a uh, lower price. Although you can uh, still uh, like pay monthly basis, but just it's uh, cheaper. And about uh, if you still have somebody maybe have still uh, Windows Server 2008 or SQL Server, so you can, there is uh, two options for you. Either you will go to uh, stay on premises and uh, uh, pay extra for the uh, security updates or, or you have to um, upgrade your current version. Or if you go to Azure, then uh, if you will lift them uh, to Azure, you can, you will get the security updates uh, at no additional charge or even better if you will um, go to the platform as a service model then uh, yeah it's um, uh, you don't have to anyways uh, patch them and 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 uh, uh, or you can uh, if you will have the opportunity to use the same licenses use the hybrid benefits then it's uh, then, yeah much more cost effective so uh, those were the triggers and, and uh, possibilities uh, for Windows Server migration. And uh, now I will give the uh, word to Sergey, who will uh, actually show you how to migrate the server existing from existing on-premises uh, environment to Azure. Go ahead. Okay, so for this demo, we have a small uh, vSphere environment with with a vCenter and uh, one eSXi host, it, as you can see on the screen. And I have several virtual machines running on it. There are some uh, Windows Server 2016, mostly 19, and a couple of uh, Linux servers here. Uh, so the next step, we go to the Azure portal and to deploy the uh, Azure Migrate um, service. We can just uh, search for it here in the search bar. Azure Migrate. Uh, currently it's already installed, so you just click and create there and it will take uh, several seconds or a couple of minutes to, uh, to be ready for you. So once you have it uh, installed, you can select which workloads you want to migrate. So we'll be concentrating on uh, um, 
virtual machine and SQL Server uh, and migration. So the first selection here is uh, servers. And there would be a discover button here once you deploy it. So it will guide you through the through this um, um, uh, configuration process. So first of all, you need to select the virtualization platform or if you are migrating from uh, physical hosts, then you can select those as well. And of course, uh, from hyper -E. In our case, it's a VMware environment. So I choose vSphere. Uh, so this uh, appliance will generate a key that you will uh, require for uh, connecting your uh, appliance uh, to the cloud. And there are two possible ways to deploy this appliance. Either you um, download the OVA file, which is uh, ready for VMware um, um, deployment. It's basically a Windows, uh, Windows Server VM uh, with, uh, with this um, migration software uh, pre-configured or you can use your ex one of your existing servers that has enough resources and just uh, download the, uh, the small uh, installation package in a zip file. So once uh, the appliance is deployed, I'm going to, okay, it's already open here, I already beat it into it, and um, it's a web service that runs locally using this port number. And it will be it will be shown this uh, web page where first of all you need to make sure that all the prerequisites are uh, complete. So it has connectivity to Azure. It uh, can uh, synchronize um, uh, time with Azure. So it's running the latest version. And um, separately you need to download one small um, uh, zip file. Uh, which is called this uh, VMware Virtual Disk Development Kit and copy it to, uh, to, a, to a certain folder. So once this is done, the prerequisites are fine, then you uh, use the key that you obtained from the Azure Migrate portal to connect this appliance to the cloud. So once it's done, it, it will show that the appliance has been successfully registered. And uh, after that, you, you start um, entering uh, credentials and uh, IP addresses or uh, host names of your vCenter environment. So I have mine here. So for, this is for the vCenter and uh, this is the uh, vCenter's IP address. Uh, once that is done, uh, then you can also um, populate um, credentials for your service. So um, you can populate like uh, domain credentials, Linux credentials, uh, local Windows credentials, and SQL credentials. And using those credentials, Azure Migrate will uh, try to uh, look into your virtual machines and uh, look up for the services and uh, roles and software that is installed there and uh, uh, give you um, assessment results based on this information. So once uh, the credentials are validated, then you can um, start the discovery process by uh, pressing this uh, start discovery button. Uh, this discovery process depends on the size of your vSphere environment. So in my case, it took like a couple of minutes to discover. And uh, after that, all this uh, information um, is visible in in the Azure Migrate service. So here we can see that uh, it has discovered eight virtual machines. One of them is running SQL Server. And uh, for the operating system types, we have six uh, Windows VMs and uh, two Linux ones. And uh, we can, of course, see some um, information and status about the, the appliance itself, whether it has um, any connectivity issues. So we can see that all services are working and the connection has been established fine. And uh, once it's done, you can run assessments. So by pressing the assess button, you can select um, Azure VM sequels. It, it can also uh, assess your um, web services if you, if you are um, 
considering migrating your web applications to the cloud. So these assessments can be done in groups. So you select uh, several servers from the whole list, for example, uh, group them, and then you can um, uh, consider those migration scenarios based on those groups. So I have uh, two groups here. One is for uh, like uh, virtual machines, which we'll, we'll look into it right now. So it's uh, four VMs under this group. Uh, an additional uh, possibility is also to assess um, dependencies, um, but it requires some uh, extra steps to be uh, uh, done in, in each virtual machine. So you need to install an agent, and this agent can uh, trace um, all the connections that this virtual machine makes to other machines. So you can like uh, have some uh, graphs with dependencies, you can see which machines communicates to uh, other machines and uh, which ports it is using. So it can help you uh, make uh, better migration plans when you need to migrate several VMs, so you need to know um, and those dependencies. Okay, uh, well, yeah, it shows the resources and that each VM has operating system types, and etc. Once you obtain this information, then um, the next step would be to start replicating your VMs. So under here, there is a replicate button. So you press replicate. You uh, need to again select the virtualization uh, platform. Uh, you select this um, Azure Migrate Appliance. Of course, you can have several Azure Migrate Appliances all connected to, to the cloud. So that's why this selection is present here. What's next? So now it asks uh, how you want to uh, start the replication process best based on your assessment that you've done, or uh, you can uh, manually select those machines. So I, I'd like to select those manually, for example. I select this one VM, press next. So uh, now we have this um, standard selection of um, Azure resources that they need to uh, enter. So I select a resource group and I select a network. Those resources, of course, um, have to be um, uh, previously um, created in Azure. So the resource group and uh, virtual network with some one or more subnets. Okay, so this is the virtual network. Then we can select the subnet. And uh, we can use other uh, settings as, as default here. Of course, if you have um, already uh, have a Windows Server license, you can um, minimize costs by, by uh, confirming that you have this license. So let's press next. Uh, now it's uh, suggesting you to uh, select the virtual machine size. So the default setting is uh, automatically select. So Azure will decide for itself uh, which machine type it will be. But you can, of course, there is a large list of um, different virtual machine sizes. So uh, considering it's it has two cores and four gigabytes of memory. Maybe I would like to have, um, for example, this uh, kind of uh, virtual machine, also having the same amount of, of resources. Uh, the type of disk is uh, SCSI because it's um, using SCSI in my vSphere environment. I press next. Uh, here I can um, choose which um, disk type I want for this machine. So by default, it's uh, standard HDD, and you can select for a standard SSD and for, for the best performance, it's, um, it can be a premium SSD. Uh, if, you, if the machine has uh, several disks, you can select which ones you want to migrate, either all of them or maybe some of them you want to ignore. I'll press next and then there is tagging so basically those are like comments for all your um, azure resources it's a very uh, useful feature to have and and um, put tags uh, where possible 
And on the final uh, page, you can initiate the replication process. Of course, the, uh, the replication process will, will take some time, which depends on the virtual machine size and the internet connectivity that you have. And uh, once uh, it has completed, then you can see those replicated replicating VMs under here, replicating servers. Uh, in here, I have already previously um, replicated three machines. And uh, what can you do with these uh, machines? You can test the migration, uh, which means that uh, Azure will uh, clone. Uh, for example, if I select uh, test migration, this one, uh, Azure Migrate will clone uh, this machine and let you test it. Uh, so you can connect to it and see if it's working fine in Azure and um, if all the services and software is uh, working fine. Uh, that's how you make sure that um, after migration, the application uh, uh, works. Um, cloning also takes some time, so I have already um, selected this taste migration scenario for this uh, second machine. And now we can look under uh, virtual machines. And I have this VM here, so it has the, the same name as, uh, as the original host with this test. Uh, add it to, to the end of the name. So I can select this one. I can see which um, which virtual machine size it's using. Uh, it's private IP address uh, already assigned from the Azure network. And um, uh, there is a good possibility to connect to the virtual machine without using any external connectivity by using Azure Bastion. So Azure Bastion is a service that um, creates a so-called um, temporary network, uh, which is used uh, by connecting with using either RDP or SSH in case of Linux to your virtual machines and via this web portal. So I just need to enter my credentials for this virtual machine. Uh, select connect and it will open in a separate uh, page here and I can see that that VM starts fine and I can test my applications and see how it behaves. Once these uh, tests are performed then you can go back to the Azure Migrate Appliance to the service migration is replicating servers page and you can clean up this uh, test environment by selecting clean up test migration so it will delete this uh, clone vm and you can continue replicating and uh, once uh, you are ready to migrate then you select migrate it will um, prompt you to shut down the source virtual machine so it would um, replicate all the remaining uh, data from it so uh, press yes, and it will, in the background, it will start uh, the final migration process. This migration process also takes time, so, so you just need to wait once it's ready and uh, available. That's uh, basically how this migration process looks. And for testing, for example, you you can um, have a separate network, not this uh, network that you would uh, later use for production, but a separate one. Uh, so it would be um, restricted uh, with firewall policies, so-called um, network um, uh, security groups in Azure and NSGs. So once you test, you, you make sure that uh, the virtual machine, this cloned virtual machine, does not have access to the Internet and cannot um, make any conflicts with your existing environment. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, now first phase is uh, done. Uh, we have migrated uh, servers to um, Azure. But now is the databases. Uh, if uh, we are uh, thinking about uh, SQL, then what are the options? Uh, 
Once again, let's start with the uh, reasons uh, why you move to Azure. They are basically the same as in uh, virtual machines, but the main key points here is that uh, in Azure, you will get on-demand infrastructure, infrastructure uh, this um, total cost of ownership actually, you will pay what you use. It's it's very important point uh, uh, from here that, uh, yeah, it's uh, if you calculate all those uh, costs together and, and then it's always uh, reasonable uh, to think about uh, cloud services. And uh, what are the types uh, you can use in in in, uh, in Azure uh, with virtual machines? Uh, maybe not so much, but if you are talking about databases and migration, then uh, there is um, uh, options to move to infrastructure as a service and uh, platform as a service. Infrastructure as a service is basically basically uh, easy. You can just copy paste your uh, existing uh, virtual machine together with SQL Server databases to Azure and uh, and start start using it. Uh, your like, like responsibility starts from the operating system. Uh, the, all the uh, down from uh, the hardware part is taken care of by uh, by by Microsoft, and you will get a virtual machine operating system, and on top of that, the SQL Server. Or you can uh, move one step ahead, like uh, you can start using platform as a service. It's, uh, also, as, as I told you, uh, there is like, um, uh, it's more easier, uh, maybe in the end of the day, and it's uh, less risks for you. You don't have to uh, take care of the all the mach uh, virtual machine patching, server patching, security stuff, and so on. You will uh, start using the uh, platform uh, like database services and you will take care about data and, and application on top of that and you can use the other benefits in in, in cloud also the all the machine learning and and intelligent uh, stuff there uh, ai so those are the, uh, the possibilities and uh, if you're talking about uh, sql then yeah as i as i mentioned the first uh, thing is the infrastructure as a service you can uh, just lift and shift it machine to azure and just use it or you can think this through and start using platform as a service and then you have like basically two options uh, it's like uh, azure sql managed instance or azure sql database i will talk about this those things uh, also what's the diff what are the differences uh, but yeah um, now uh, that maybe let's say that you have decided to do you want to migrate you want to migrate uh, how exactly do you get there uh, azure offers various methods to help you to get to the cloud so you may choose rehost as i mentioned it's like uh, copy paste lift and shift your databases as it uh, is to the cloud and you place uh, is like uh, sql server on azure virtual machine allowing you to make no changes to your pre-existing applications it's basically the easiest uh, options however uh, you may find that you'd like to move to platform as a service offering such as uh, azure sql uh, managed instance uh, in which case you you would have to apply some changes to your application uh, design to get it uh, to the cloud uh, this is what is known as uh, refactoring your application or database or you want to start fresh and and uh, rebuild a cloud native application on, on azure sql database and uh, in that case, uh, Azure offers the tools also to help you to get there as well. And, and uh, then it's, yeah, different, different, uh, different um, options to get there. And yeah, once again, the slide that uh, what is the rehost and what is the refactor, just rehosting the existing uh virtual machines or 
do some kind of uh, little changes in your uh, configurations or start from the scratch and then uh, yeah start building your uh, application on top of sql uh, database there in azure okay uh, uh, of course there is uh, always it's not so easy to uh, know where to start like uh, uh the migration so so yeah there is a couple of uh offerings here just to how to migrate maybe if you know your you will uh, need operating system uh, level access and uh, don't want to make any changes to your existing database then sql server on uh, azure vm is the right option for you uh, but if your goal is to modernize an existing application and uh, you want to make uh, you want to take advantage of all the features uh, of azure platform as a service then azure uh, sql managed instance may be the right fit of course with a few tweaks to your existing application you should be able to run managed instance and then take advantage of your uh, instance easily and uh, finally if you looking to begin building cloud native applications on azure or are looking uh, for a flexibility to automatically like pause and resume intermittent workloads then azure sql database is the perfect choice and then uh, yeah so those are the options mm. and once again the cost the same kind of um, uh, the same kind of uh, offers are uh, apply here also as it was in uh, uh, virtual machines and the SQL Server also if you have your existing licenses already and with software assurance you can use Azure Hybrid Benefit and uh, use the same licenses in Azure you can reserve your uh, also your machines if you are using the uh, virtual machines uh, together with SQL uh, server then uh, you can reserve them for a year or for three years and also have the better price mm, uh, one more thing is uh, in Azure you can actually get this kind of visual studio subscription for your uh, developing developing and testing definitely you uh, it's reasonable to use that uh, it's not for a live environment but uh, you can use this subscription for uh, testing and developing and then it, you will get the uh, better price for that also and uh, security updates for sql server also as i uh, mentioned in uh, uh, server side the sql also has the um, if you will move it to uh, azure you will get the free um, security updates and here is the comparison like well, one um, example uh, if you are using um, for example this kind of uh, this type of uh, virtual machine with eight cores and uh, yeah eight cores machine in, in in azure so if you will um, use the hybrid benefits then it's uh, how much it will uh, how much you will win it's like uh, it will cost more than 50 percent less and uh, yeah there's one point to keep in mind is that you have you can uh, kind of uh, use the same licenses um, on both like in on-premises and in azure for 180 days so at that period you should migrate uh, your stuff to azure and then uh, then you can use the same licenses there all right and uh, yeah this is just one example that shows you if you are using the windows uh, uh, server licenses uh, machines and then the sql server uh, then it's definitely the uh, cheaper places to host them in Azure than, for example, in Amazon. It's if you're talking about yeah, the Microsoft uh, Microsoft um, software, then that's that's the, probably the reasonable uh, place. 
and uh, actually there is one um, website also very simple that where you can uh, uh, actually um, like calculate or just rethink which uh, database is the uh, best for me what endpoint is the best for me i will yeah, show you this um, you can just uh, play with it and then say that all right i want to migrate or my, uh, modernize my application and uh, take it to Azure. Mm, do you require operating system access or control? Yes, and the answer is, uh, yeah, uh, no brainer. You, have, you should uh, use the uh, SQL Server on Azure virtual machines, but if you don't need, for example, operating system access and then the what else there is? I need uh, some kind of um, distributed transaction coordinators, SSAs, and so on. Link and server cross databases, uh, both, let's say, uh, okay, I have uh, databases less than 16 terabytes, but uh, then it will uh, give the answer that uh, you should use either the SQL Server on Azure virtual machines or Azure SQL managed instance. It's like yeah, you can um, kind of lift or shift the full uh, SQL Server to Azure and use the, all the SQL Server benefits or the features there, or the most of the, uh, actually the features uh, is available in Azure SQL managed instances uh, platform also. Okay, so maybe it will give you some kind of ideas uh, how to move on. Uh, but now, yeah, let's uh, give it to Sergey, and Sergey will show you how to migrate some SQL Server uh, databases to to Azure. Yeah, let's take a look at the scenario, this uh, lift and shift kind of scenario that when you, uh, you know, take your on-prem database and migrate it to to uh, to the uh, Azure database. So. Uh, one prerequisite is that uh, before you do this kind of migration, you create a SQL server in uh, Azure. It's not a virtual machine, it's a service that will host these um, uh, SQL databases that you, you, that you want. So I'm going to select all my resources now. And we can search for this in here. Cool, uh, service. So I've already created one here. And the creation process is um, rather simple. You you select a resource group that where you want to create this and um, you put some name of course here. That's cool. Um, you select the um, location. Europe, for example, and which method of authentication you use. So there are two possible ways, then uh, <clears throat> uh, SQL authentication and um, Azure Active Directory authentication, or both. So in my case, it's uh, in SQL authentication. So you put a name of a Administrator, some um, default login names are restricted to use, like administrator root, so you need to create some some other one. Uh, then there is networking part. So if you want to allow Azure services to access this or not. Some additional settings for defender, tagging, uh, review and create. So once it's done, you can start creating um, SQL databases. On it. If you want to migrate, uh, like lift, lift and sheet your on-prem database, so you need to create an empty uh, SQL data, uh, database first on top of this uh, SQL server that we have just created. So we also okay, I'm going to go back to my home and search for a SQL databases. SQL database. I have already some of them uh, here available, so creation process looks like this. So 
again the resource group and database name uh, the SQL server that would, it would run on and uh, you can choose the resources um, like, uh, compute resources uh, that will be reserved for this database there are two um, so-called purchasing models for smaller databases you can um, prefer the DTU which stands for uh, database transaction units uh, so this the smallest um, which is good for uh, testing uh, the smallest one is basic uh, the database size can be up to uh, two gigabytes and the monthly price is like five, five almost five euros or five dollars uh, if you need a large database of course you can opt for a uh, standard or premium so uh, standard is uh, is what we uh, test with so those TTUs you can use the slider to choose uh, the this um, the amount of compute units that you want from this database and the uh, database ma maximum size and you can yeah uh, see how this affects this monthly price. So let's leave it like this. If I click apply, then uh, database um, creation uh, uh, start in the background. It will not take a lot of time. Maybe a couple of minutes or less. So uh, once this is done, we can uh, connect to the SQL server from is, which way we prefer is it uh, SQL management studio or uh, Azure uh, data studio so if you are more familiar with uh, SQL uh, server management studio then you can use this uh, external name of the SQL server and um, and connect to it using uh, SQL authentication so I have, I have already connected to it I can see my uh, and to refresh, you can see my databases that I have previously created. And uh, below here are my uh, on-prem uh, SQL instances. Under these instances, I have um, deployed um, the Adventure Works databases. Those are like Microsoft um, demo databases that you can uh, download from Microsoft website uh, for uh, for uh, for each uh, SQL version. So these databases are quite small and um, uh, are quite good for for testing uh, scenarios. And uh, Microsoft provides a tool uh, which is called um, Data Migration Assistant. It um, has two purposes. It helps you assist, um, evaluate like your existing uh, databases to see if they are um, uh, suitable for migration. And uh, it also helps to um, migrate them in, in the most common, like those uh, shift, uh, lift and shift scenarios. So once you open this, um, the first choice, it uh, asks you to create a project. So we, we select this assessment kind of project, put in some name here. Uh, what assessment time it would be. In our case, it's a database engine. So we have just databases. The other choice is um, integration services. Uh, source uh, server type is SQL server. Um, in case you some reason have um, SQL running in the Amazon, so it can um, get information from there as well. So it's our local uh, SQL server in this case, and the target one is uh, Azure SQL database. Uh, I'm going to create, and it shows me which uh, checks it would perform, so database compatibility and feature parity tests. So I press next, and uh, from that window here, I can uh, connect to my uh, instances. So in this case, would it be like this server 2017? I can use either Windows or SQL authentication, whichever you have here. Press connect, and it has detected that I have two databases. I'm going to select the second one. It's more like um, uh, DW stands for uh, data warehouse, so it has a um, small structure similar to uh, data warehouse databases. So I press add, 
and I can start the assessment. Okay, it was rather quick for this one, and um, we can see that um, the only warning it has uh, that uh, it warns us that um, uh, Azure SQL database only allows SQL or uh, Azure Active Directory authentication. But uh, of course, in our Windows Server, we have Windows authentication, which is not uh, supported. And as for the compatibility issues, we have none. So we are good to go with the, with the migration. Uh, a good a good thing about this assessment tool is that if you have, of course, a larger database with um, a lot of um, uh, kind of a complicated structure, there can be possibly some uh, potential issues. And the um, assessment tool will um, tell you whether these issues are critical, that you cannot proceed with the migration for some reason. And um, in other cases, there can be some warnings. And uh, this assessment tool will provide you with information how, how to remediate them, fix them. Uh, so once I have this assessment ready, I press this button, uh, uh, upload to Azure Migrate. And um, after some time, uh, this assessment information will reach Azure Migrate appliance in Azure. Not appliance, but Azure Migrate service. And, um, I would go to this uh, database only uh, migration page and I would see uh, the results of my assessment here. So I have two instances and four databases. I'm going to open them. So this is the database I, I would like to migrate. Once I have that, uh, I would close this assessment, maybe delete it. You can also save the assessment for future needs. I will open uh, this uh, new button again, and uh, for now I will choose the migration project. I need to put some name in here as well. Uh, these param parameters will, uh, will be the same. I can migrate either schema and data both at the same time or schema or data only. So for example, if you have already schema migrated, then you just need to migrate the data. And uh, in our case, it's a small database, so I'll migrate both schema and data and press create. Here I need to connect to my uh, on-prem window uh, SQL um, instance, press connect. You can select this database. Next, and now it asks for the target uh, SQL Server. Uh, in this case, it would be, of course, this um, SQL Server running in Azure. I put the name of, uh, put the password for the administrator account. Let's connect. And uh, here I need to select uh, this empty VM, uh, not VM, uh, empty database, where I want to um, migrate my data. So I know this is the database I've created, an empty one. I select it and press next. Um, it can see which uh, objects I have in this database and I can generate a script regarding recreating these objects uh, in, uh, in the Azure database. And Press deploy schema here. As, I can, as we can see, the, it has uh, 211 uh, schema objects, and now they okay, have already been uh, deployed to this new database. And the final step would be migrating the data. Press migrate data. I can select this database as 30 tables, but um, migrating them all will take more time, so I will just select a couple of them, for example, these months. I press start data migration. So it was rather quick for these uh, two tables. So now I can uh, go back to SQL Management Studio. I can press refresh and uh, select this 
database. And I can see that uh, from my tables view that I already have my tables here and some of them already have data migrated. So of course, uh, the final step would be before, before the migration, I mean, uh, <clears throat> you would uh, need to take either take this uh, database um, kind of offline or disconnect it from the application that's using it. So uh, it would not make any changes while you are migrating it. And uh, after the migration, you need to go to your application and uh, put the new uh, address of your SQL server and uh, into it. Of course, in most scenarios, you would like to uh, have direct connectivity uh, with the database that would not go via the uh, external, uh, via public internet. So the preferred way would be to have site-to-site uh, -site connection created with Azure, and you would create um, private endpoints uh, uh, to connect to your databases. So that's that's basically it. For the for the database migration. All right, thank you, Sergey. Uh, it seemed quite uh, quite easy. If you uh, take care of all the uh, small details, technical details, and uh, yeah, I think uh, there's no questions in the Q and A section at the moment. So hopefully you got some useful information and, and ideas from that uh, webinar. Uh, thanks again, Sergey. Uh, and uh, yeah, as I told, as I saw, so it's not so difficult. You need to just uh, do some uh, planning and calculating and it's, um, it's doable. So if you have any questions, you can turn to uh, Prima and uh, representatives in uh, Lithuania, Latvia or Estonia and, and uh, just yeah, we can help you to uh, in planning and then migrating phases if needed. So thank you for participating and, and take care. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.